Dr. Eric Westman here with another episode of Learn with Dr. Westman. This one is called A Teaspoon of Sugar in the Bloodstream. And I use this when I teach people with diabetes because I want them to understand that diabetes is a problem of too much sugar in the bloodstream, or glucose more specifically, but I'll use sugar as the common term. And when you check your blood sugar, it's usually about 100 milligrams per deciliter. But if your blood sugar is elevated all day, that could be pre-diabetes, you know, in the 110, 120. It could be frank diabetes where the blood sugar is over, say, 150 all day long. The reason I teach about the one teaspoon of sugar in the bloodstream is that's all there is. So that if you eat something with a teaspoon of sugar in it or drink something with a teaspoon of sugar, it's going to raise your blood sugar. It might even double it if you absorb it all at once and your insulin can't go up to keep it down like that. And, and so, you know, it's really not a difficult calculation. So bear with me. This is the equivalent of, I would say, middle school education now, uh, middle school math. And in fact, I use this teaching medical students and, and who come to my office and um, many of them uh, don't remember how to figure it out. But uh, so that's 100 milligrams per deciliter. That's your blood sugar if you check the blood sugar um, in milligrams uh, per deciliter, of course. So how do you convert that into grams? So the, bear with me. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is change this number into uh, how many grams of glucose is there at the end there. Okay, see that? So you multiply 100 milligrams per deciliter time. Let's see, how many grams, uh, milligrams in a gram? Oh, yeah, 1,000 milligrams per gram. And then how many deciliters per liter? 10 deciliters per liter. And then how many liters of blood is there? No problem. There's about 5 liters of blood in a typical adult. So there would be even less in, in a child. So now there we go. We have the 100 milligrams per deciliter times 1 gram, 1,000 milligrams per gram. Remember, this is middle school math now. 10 deciliters per liter, 5 liters. How many grams does that turn out to be? Well, let's see, the, the, you cancel out the zeros. Remember that? So 1, 2, 3 zeros on the top, canceling out 3 zeros on the bottom. And then you have 1 times 1 times 1 times 5 equals 5. Remember that kind of math? You, so what happens is we canceled out the units as well. Milligrams cancel out on the top and on the bottom. Deciliters cancel out on the bottom and on the top. And then the liters cancel out on the bottom and on the top. You have 1 times 1 times 1 times 5 equals 5. Grant, so there's five grams of sugar in the bloodstream. That's it. Five grams. Now, how much is five grams of sugar? Ah, well, right. Um, didn't tell you that. Well, five grams of sugar is about a teaspoon of sugar. So there's a teaspoon of sugar in your bloodstream at any given moment. So if you have a tendency toward diabetes or just don't want your blood sugar to go up after you eat, um, let's see how many teaspoons of sugar are in foods that you eat. And this is a figure put together by Dr. Unwin in the UK. Boiled rice, a serving has 10 teaspoons of sugar, the equivalent. A baked potato has eight teaspoons of sugar. French fries, seven teaspoons of sugar. An apple, has two teaspoons of sugar. So that these are commonly consumed foods by those who eat carbs. And uh, there's a lot of teaspoons of sugar. Oh wait, eggs at the very bottom there has no teaspoons of sugar. Has no, oh, and then there's broccoli has maybe 0.2 grams of sugar. So when you go to you know bread, apple, banana, you're getting into two, five teaspoons of sugar. 
in my teaching I talk about grams of carbohydrates it might be useful for you to think in terms of teaspoons of sugar roughly five carbs five grams of sugar in a teaspoon of sugar and that's all you have in your bloodstream so just imagine you're eating oh bread and and oatmeal for breakfast and and you have 100 grams of carbs that get digested into 100 grams so that's 20 teaspoons of sugar and you only have one so your blood sugar goes up and insulin goes up to keep the blood sugar down and if it can't control it you you still have an elevation elevation all day that's pre-diabetes if you had an overshoot of the insulin your blood sugar might go down even too low and that's called low blood sugar or hypoglycemia reactive to the carbs that you eat so I found it very useful to use the teaspoon of sugar, the five grams of sugar or glucose in your bloodstream as a, a rule of thumb for, for teaching and reminding ourselves of just how little glucose, sugar we have in our bloodstream and that we want to be very careful to over consume sugar in drinks, for example, and in and, and really, really starchy things. Uh, maybe every now and then, but you wouldn't want to do that day after day after day. It not only is the pathway toward prediabetes and diabetes, it's also the pathway toward overweight and obesity because the body, some bodies are very, very efficient at turning that glucose into fat and then storing it in the fat cells and when you have insulin elevated it locks up the fat in the fat cells making it very difficult for you to lose weight in fact you'll be gaining weight if you have a lot of insulin around so just remember that there's a teaspoon of sugar in the bloodstream and go from there look on the labels if it says more than five grams of carbs total carbs in a serving i i don't have much of those things you want to eat things that are low in carbs to protect against an elevation in the blood sugar or blood glucose and, um, and keep the insulin as low as you can. I hope that's helpful. Until the next time, see you then. Be sure to ring the bell, click like. And why not send this to a friend, uh, a neighbor, a relative? It's a grassroots movement after all. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out AdapterLifeAcademy.com.